What's the word, y'all? Do not mind the set. Uh, we just got done filming our TV show Tuesdays at 2 o'clock Eastern, if you want to tune in, ESPN2. And we just got done wrapping up watching Minnesota dominate the Denver Nuggets. And I didn't want to drive the 30 minutes home. I wanted to get my live reactions for y'all like we normally do. I cannot believe what I just saw. There are some things that, are, that feel unpredictable, right? Even if you were the most optimistic Minnesota Timberwolves fan around, there was no way you thought you was going to go into Denver, the place that a lot of people say is the hardest place to play basketball. There was no way you, was, you thought that you were going to go into Denver and steal two games, it, 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 especially if I told you, that the DPO at Rudy Gobert wasn't going to play in one of them. When I saw the update, I said, congratulations to the Gobert family. I'm a little bit afraid for y'all chances of winning. And they held the defending champions to, what, 80 points? 80. This is insane. Insanity. Now, I'm going to be candid with y'all. I picked the different Nuggets to win this series in seven. I'm not a guy that's going to waver. It doesn't really matter who wins for me. I'm, that was just my prediction. I knew that the Minnesota Timbos were a very good team. I knew it. Hell, if you look at my, uh, it was like Spotify rap, but the NBA, I was in the top 0.2% of fans that watched Minnesota. They were my number one watch team this season. That's how much I've loved their year. How insane Anthony Edwards is. Rudy Gobert is one of my favorite of all time. Like, and even that, I didn't see it going the way it is. Uh, a lot of y'all been asking, like, why I haven't been dropping, like, these instant reactions every single game. The reality is I also have a, a podcast, uh, the Kenny Beachin podcast that I'm doing. So if there's other series you want to hear me talk about, you can find that on YouTube as well. Um, but in my podcast episode that I dropped today, I was talking about the fact that this current Minnesota Timberwolves team is the best team this Denver Nuggets team has seen in the last couple of years of the, play the playoffs. Last year's run was great. It was historic. It was dominant. But they didn't see a single team that was this good. They did not see the best defense in basketball, or like points of he ahead of their competition. And this is just such a statement game. If, if game one was a statement game, which it was, because Anthony Edwards had 43 points and he had a turnaround mid-range jump shot over his right shoulder after telling Cardinal Towns to clear out and he looked like Michael Jordan, all the memes became true. If there was a statement game after a statement game, this is it. No Rudy Gobert. And this was still... One of the toughest games I've ever seen Nikola Jokic play. It just was. Carl Anthony Towns, phenomenal. Cal Anderson, phenomenal. Nas Reed, phenomenal. Everybody. It's just like I remember seeing a stat after the first series, and it may, it's one of the reasons why I did pick the Denver Nuggets, and this is why you don't just list the stats, is whatever. Um, that it was saying, and this is from Kraft, the NBA. They, they gauge what a player did in the regular season versus what they did in the playoffs so far. And basically, Anthony Edwards, um, Jaden McDaniels, Mike Conley were all playing leagues ahead or better than what they did in a regular season. And my, my question was, could they sustain that against an objectively better team? Like the Suns, they were a good basketball team. They weren't a great basketball team. That's how they got swept. I didn't know if they can maintain all of this, this pressure. And so far, I mean, Jaden McDaniels has zero field goals made in game number one. Didn't matter. And game number two, you always know the defense is going to be. I'm never going to talk about the defense. But in game number two, I think he had, what, five points, five fouls? Didn't matter. Rudy Gobert, not there. Didn't matter. And you didn't even need, like, this supernova Anthony Edwards game. And some of the other games versus the Phoenix Suns and then game number one of the Den uh, Denver series, you saw Anthony Edwards turn into Jordan. Today, gave you glimpses. He did a little shrug. He gave you glimpses, but he didn't need to go full on MJ in order to win this game. And that is scary if you're Denver. Denver, as far as this construction of this team, has not had their back against the wall like this. Now, granted, they did come back down 3-1, I think twice in one single single series a season. Um, that might have been a bubble year. So this is not completely, completely new to them. But as far as this core of all of their championship quality guys, they've never been down 2-0 and fighting with their, with their back against the wall. They have to go to Minnesota, not just win one of those games. They don't need to split this series, the, the, the away games. They need to win both of them if they want to maintain their chances of winning this. And I, I haven't looked at Twitter or social media, or I don't know what's going to be talked about on TV tomorrow. But I think it should be more of the praise of the Minnesota Timbers versus the opposite for uh, the Denver Nuggets. I mean, Jamal Murray is struggling out there. He just really is. We haven't had a really, really complete Jamal Murray game. Don't, do not get me wrong. He had the two-game winners versus the Lakers. That's all that matter. But he's laboring out there. The one play that went hella viral, viral is when he's bringing the ball to the court and Nikhil Alexander-Walker is hounding him. And I believe it was also Jaden McDaniels hounding him time and time again. And I saw some people talk about how that was a bunch of fouls on that play. That is just great 
defense. Nikhil Alexander Walker. Before the season started, we did our predictions episode. And in that, we one of the superlatives was like a player that has a low stock right now that you're buying into. And Akil Alexander Walker was my guy. I watched what he did in FIBA play. I knew that he was starting to evolve his game. And now, I mean, th this defense is not like Rudy Gobert is going to win DPOY. He's going to win DPOY. But the defense is not just Rudy. It's not previous DPOY Rudy years. Like when Rudy was a part of the Utah Jazz, the reason he won those awards is because the whole idea was to funnel the offensive player to Rudy and let Rudy deter him from the rim or block the shot or make it really, really tough because they have four perimeter defenders that were ass. This team has Anthony Edwards, who say, I want Jamal Murray first possession of every game. Jaden McDaniels, who should be an all-defensive player. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, he's coming off the bench. And he's playing all defensive caliber defense. Carl Anthony Towns has evolved defensively where early parts in his career, the reason they traded for Rudy Gobert is because he couldn't defend. And now he's guarding Jokic. And it wasn't just one-on-one. -on -one, but guarding Jokic one-on-one -on, -one on many possessions. And Jokic is the most talented offensive player in basketball. And Jokic had, what, 15-ish points? I don't even know what the final stat line was because they pulled the stars and I stopped watching. This was amazing. Series is not over. Denver Nuggets are a very good basketball team. They're very well coached, but their back is really against the wall, and I'm curious to see what they do. If Anthony Edwards and the Minnesota Timberwolves can make a conference finals appearance this early in his career, who knows what, what the future can look like. He's 22 years old. Brother was just legally able to get his first drink in America last year. And now, I mean, through, through two games versus Jokic, he's been the better player. That's what I have to say, right? Through two games versus Nikola Jokic, he has been the better player in the series. And again, today he didn't need to be super, super ant. I don't know what else to say. This is such a blast. Um, I, this is why I love the NBA because all season long we talked about how the Denver Nuggets were inevitable where my, my championship team was the Denver Nuggets from last year to the offseason through the regular season, and the start of the postseason. The Denver Nuggets are my team, my team, my team, and right now they're down 2-0. Will they come back? I don't know. But this ain't the perfect team like we thought it could be. And that's something. Whether that be Jamal Murray's injury or this or that, the only thing we can say is when the, the tip-off happens, whatever happens between these lines, that's what we got. Let me know what you think, man. Minnesota fans, y'all deserve some love, but but you know what I'm saying? It's, you, des you, you, you deserve to be excited because y'all have not seen this level of success since KG gone. So I understand it. You got two more games, and then you got four more games, and then you got four more games because at this point I feel like anything is possible.